Jamie, I want you to remember one thing. Oh, now, the way you act, you'd think I was, I was getting old. Now, Amy, remember one thing. Ed McIntyre's a young man. Now, he, he doesn't know what it was like when we came to Nevada, and uh, he doesn't think the older settlers have any special privileges. He's a Johnny come yesterday, still wet behind the ears. He is the judge. He's a firm man, and he's an honest man. So when you get in there, try to, well, try to look a little contrite. Got nothing to be contrite about. Like always, I asked Si, and like always, he said, you got to do what's right, Amy, and that's what I done. Good to see you, Ben. Maybe with you here, Mrs. Wilder will be a little more reasonable this time. Taint me you who's unreasonable, judges. It's, it's Roberts there. Amy, please sit down. Now, just whose fence you think you've been pulling out time and again? And whose land you think it's on? Yours? No, mine. Oh, it, it, it don't matter whose land it is. The deer been running along that land down to my creek for longer than any of us have been breathing. They got prior rights. Mrs. Wilder, this is the fourth time you've been before me, brought on charges by Mr. Roberts of malicious destruction. It simply can't go on. Oh, yes, it can go on, and it will, too, as long as that robber keeps dirty in everything he touches. You cut down every single tree you ever owned. You lay the land stark naked. You poison every drop of water. Amy. You know what that means for all of God's critters? Starvation, that's what. Fish turning belly up. Nothing to eat for the birds, nor the deer, nor, nor, nor the coon, nor the coyote, nor even the poor old cougar. The poor old cougar? Oh, of course it's your fence. But you just put that fence up to keeping the deer out of my creek, just so as to plague me, just so as to blackmail me into selling you that land and the water rights I own down Carson Way. Land you want so you can build a dirty old stamp mill and poison another. Another string. Amy, would you please sit down? She's worried about a few fish, and I'm trying to help the mine owners and the economy of Virginia City. Well, I'm not to be blackmailed. Not by nobody. Not for nothing. Not till, till Satan's home ranch freezes solid. Now, I paid my fine of four, and I'll pay it again, and I'll pay it any time that that robber there builds a fence to stop them deer. Mrs. Wilder, the next time it may not be that simple. You'll worry about next time, next time. I'll be in the wagon, Ben. I just can't stand the smell around here. Everybody in town's talking about it, Ben. She's senile. It would be so much easier, so much kinder all around if she just agreed to commit herself. Maybe you can talk to her. Ever since I died, you're the only one she'll listen to. And it's for her own good. For who's good? Hers? <laughs> what? No. No, sirree. Amy may be eccentric, but she's sure not senile. Can we stop by the hardware store, Ben? I ordered me 500 pounds of birdseed. They just come in. 500 pounds? Oh, sure, Amy. Let's go by the hardware store and pick it up. After the long winter, them birds will be needing all of that seed. Yeah.
You know, they try to get Amy to have a doctor's examination. He does none of that. Well, this fellow Roberts, he's a lumberman, stamp mill. Well, he, uh, the so-called final ladies in town, they're trying to make out that uh, Amy's senile, want to have it committed to an institution. Can they do that? Browbeat a helpless old lady like that? Not if you stop it. You're next to kin. Uh, just the same, I wish you'd talk to Amy and see if he can get her to act a little more circumspectly. She's not exactly helpless. Eh? <laughs> she has her own way of thinking and doing things, always has. Well, uh, you say that she uh, keeps peculiar company. Oh, you mean all those stray animals she takes in? My brother's letters are always full of them. The deer and whatnot. Yeah, among others. Oh, you're not, Mr. Portland. You can't bring yourself to say it. Amy's an eccentric, isn't that it? But aren't we all in one way or another? <laughs> <laughs> what I expected. I thought Cyrus left her well off. Oh, he did. But Amy doesn't care much about how things look. Well, you know how Amy is. No, I don't. Not really. Uh, here, let me help you. Thank you. <laughs> I haven't known Amy for years, except through letters. Hmm. And she hasn't written many of those lately. Hey, Margaret, who's that you got there with you? It's me, Amy. Margaret. Margaret. Oh, my, don't you look as fine as a spring sunrise, but you always was a pretty thing. Oh, Why didn't you tell me she was coming? I did, two weeks ago. Two weeks ago? Oh, 20 years back, I can remember. Everybody and everything, but last week and the week before gets clean away from me. How <laughs> <laughs> about the load of salt you ordered? Oh, dear, I'll be glad to hear that. Put it in the barn for me, would you? Ho hope this ain't all you brought along with you. Oh, my trunks will be here in a few days. Uh, let me carry that. Oh. Um, Amy, what about Ben? Oh, Ben has all that unloading to do. Besides, you don't want to hear a couple of old hens gossiping, do you? <laughs> now... You, you can sleep in the spare room upstairs, because I gotta get fresh sheets and all. But first, I better fix us some supper. Oh, you must be starved to death. Come on, boys. You'll get fed, too. Yes, you know, the food they serve you in them way stations ought better be buried in the backyard. Just sit down and make yourself to home. Come on. What's the matter? Oh, that's just Harriet. <laughs> Nothing to worry about. You probably scared her worse than she did you. You knew she was here? Well, no, but the door's always open. Harriet, she just comes and goes. That little fella there on the table, he, he's named Squirrel. <laughs> Ain't got around to naming him yet. <laughs> and this old fella here, this crow, what's the matter there? You see, he hurt his leg. You notice he got it bandaged. It's gonna be all right, though. I call him Mr. Poe. <laughs> yes, after the writer fella. Poe, the poet. That was a raven, wasn't it? Well, twas. <laughs> ain't got a raven, just a crow. Looks fine, don't he? Uh, it's been 
been so many years, Amy. Uh, we'll have to get acquainted all over again. Well, we've got lots of time. <laughs> Amy, about this talk in town. Oh, going to mend that. Just as soon as I get time. <sighs> <laughs> you know, Ben worries too much. I told him so when he... Come on, now move over. When he asked me if he could write to you. There, you see, you'd all come back to me. Anyway, they're just talking foolishness in town. I'm sure they are. But I'm here to stay, Amy, and take care of you. Heaven knows I owe it to you. Oh, you don't owe me nothing, Margaret, nor sigh neither. But it's right kindly of you to come and you're welcome. I'm pretty handy, though, you know, at taking care of myself. But it'll be good to have you, if you can stand my housekeeping. <laughs> you know, I, I get busy and I just let things go. Oh, not so. Everything looks just fine. Well, either you're blind or I am. No, the... The floor needs mopping and the curtains need washing. Well, I can be a hell. House needs painting, too. Been meaning to get to that, but you know, I can't decide what color it should be. <laughs> White would be nice. But then it'd take two coats to cover. Why, it would look nice. Barn red would be cheaper. I'll have to ask Cy. He'll tell me what to do, won't he, huh? Ask him. But, Amy, Cyrus is dead. Well, that don't mean that I still can't ask him. Well, I wouldn't do nothing without first talking it over with Cyrus. We can look at cutting material, can't we? Oh, we can look at it, but I ain't much of a hand at making them. I don't know. I cut them straight, but they always hang like they was going uphill. <laughs> I'll make the curtains. Yo, boy. Hi, Amy. Nice of you to drop by. Oh. Glad you're too late for coffee. Well, we had our coffee long ago while you... Pardon me, ma'am. No, while you ladies were still asleep. Asleep? Well, I had the animals fed and watered and the eggs gathered and breakfast on the stove before it was light enough to blow out the lander. That's what I said. I got up late. Come here, I want to show you something. Mm. Pick this little baby up on the road when you're coming in. Mm. What happened here? Looks like I took a shot in the leg. Mm -hmm. I must have mistaken him for a deer. Must have been blind. We'll put that splint on. I did. Clean break. There wasn't a splinter nowhere. Well, you done a good job. You brought him to the right place, too. Oh, Miss Amy, we wouldn't put you out none. We we could take care of Ponderosa, couldn't we? Well, sure, but how'd you like to ride all the way out there with a broke leg? And put him in the barn. I had a feeling you might say that. Here we go, babe. You shouldn't have bought them for me, Amy. I've never worn trousers in my life. Well, it's time you did. Besides, you look pretty funny pitching hay in one of them tea party dresses. I... Oh, well, I, I hadn't thought of that. How about a drink? A what? Lemonade! Not here! Sure here. Oh, you can't be sick. You're right, I didn't mean lemonade. Come on. Amy Wilder, decent women don't go into saloons, much less drinking them. Oh, this is Virginia City, not Atlanta. Besides, there's plenty of women inside. Come and see for yourself. Hi, Miss Amy. <laughs> Miss Amy, where have you been? We well, missed you. I got more to do with a lollygag around the saloon, you know. <laughs> this here is my sister-in-law, Margaret. She comes from Atlanta. Georgia. <laughs> she's, she's real genteel like now, so you behave yourselves, you hear? <laughs> sure. Margaret, this here is Sally. That's Mary Ann. How did How you do, Miss Wilder? Oh, ain't they sweet? Oh, I just love to be around young people, you know, so full of life. Come on in. We're going to have a real party now, you. Yeah. <laughs> 
the matter with you? What kind of manners is that? Atlanta kind? I will not associate with that kind of woman. And neither should you. You just do what you want and I'll do what I want, like always. You want to stay out here and die of thirst? It's up to you. Can I buy you a drink? Nope. The drinks is on me, like always. Right. Sit away from the house. You're, you're Margaret Wilder, aren't you? I've been wanting to meet you. I'm Barton Roberts. You may have heard of me. Yes, I've heard the name. Yes, I'm sure Amy has mentioned me. But really, I'm not the black-hearted villain that she thinks I am. Truly, Miss Wilder, I am concerned only for her own good. Amy may be a little eccentric, Please. but... Please. Telling the truth is only going to hurt her. Senile is a much better word. Miss Wilder, I have offered her a, a fine price for a piece of worthless land. And all she'll say is that uh, I'm trying to steal from God's creatures. I, I don't understand. All right. Amy owns a piece of land on a creek up near Carson. Now, I have offered her far more than it's worth. She says the fish in that stream would suffer. Really? I swear it. Fish. Oh, and the birds. Now, is that rational? Yes, it, it seems strange. Miss Wilder, I think it would be wise if you wrote the papers. Committed. No. Amy may need looking after, but she is harmless. fish, Amy? To eat? Hate them. Never tasted but one in my life, and I didn't like that. Yeah. What are you doing here? Passing by hot and dusty and help myself to drink your water. No objection to that. Building fence is hot work. Sweats it right out of a man. Fence? Where? Got him here, boss. Better look out. You got a rifle. Wilder? She 
tried to kill me. Should I get this straight? Amy tore down this fence after she was warned by Judge McIntyre, and this time she tried to kill me. She was very excited. Excited enough to try and commit murder? That woman's dangerous. I'll talk to her. You'll do more than that. You'll sign papers to see that she's put away where she can be taken care of. Please. I can't do that. All right. Then she'll stand trial for attempted murder, and you'll have to testify against her as an eyewitness, and she'll go to jail for a long time, probably for the rest of her life. Will you all stand and raise your right hand? <clears throat> you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you God. I do. Please be seated. The purpose of this inquiry is to determine the mental competence of one Amy Wilder. Pertinent to that, this document signed by Barton Roberts asks that she be remanded to the grand jury to face a charge of attempted murder. Or, alternatively, that she be committed to an institution as mentally incompetent and totally dangerous. If anybody ought to be locked up, it's him. Now sit down, Amy. Well, it's true. Mrs. Wilder, you will be given ample opportunity to speak in your own defense. Until that time, I earnestly suggest that you be quiet. This document, signed by Margaret Wilder, asks that she be made the legal guardian of Amy Wilder. Many of the facts are already a matter of court record. Before inquiring into the latest destruction of Mr. Roberts' fence, the court has some questions as to the ability of Amy Wilder to manage her financial affairs. Mr. Eads? Yes? Mr. Eads, it mentions here eccentric behavior and wasted funds. Well, it's my money, ain't it? Could you tell us something about this, Mr. Eads? Yes, well, I have all the bank records here. Uh, Cy left Amy well provided for, but his investments have seen some reverses. Uh, there's nothing I could do. These were Cy's investments, and Amy didn't want to make any changes. I've tried to get her to economize, but... Well, I have, Arnold Eads, and you know it. Well, it's true. House needs painting, the curtains are falling apart. I, uh, I haven't had me a new pair of pants since, since the fall of Babylon. <clears throat> Will you please go on, Mr. Eads? She's been piling up a lot of bills uh, for stuff she doesn't need. Salt blocks for wild game and uh, bird seed. Not just two or three pounds, well, sacks of it. birds eat it. And hay and grain and then uh, her saloon bills and... I don't know nobody. All these knows. fines. And yet she refuses an excellent offer from Barton Roberts for attractive brush land that she says she'll never use. Well, dear. And then she refuses the to want. cut her monthly check for Margaret Wilder. Amy, why didn't you tell me? No need. Now, there's mention here of the strange way Mrs. Wilder speaks of her deceased husband, or rather, speaks to him. I'd like to have that clarified. Ain't nothing strange about it, young fella. You've been married to a man 40 years. He ain't never dead for you. Not even if you've seen him laying there in the coffin. Judge McIntyre, may I? When someone you love dies, afterward, even long afterward, you can still see him, hear his voice, the sound of the laughter. thing.
one of those I asked to speak today, Ben. I'd like to hear what else you have to say. Well, oh, about those enormous expenses Mr. Heath was talking about. <laughs> well, Amy, Amy loves and cares for her wildlife. That's all it amounts to. Are you saying that her extreme behavior is rational, Ben? I think we're all apt to act uh, eccentrically, if we care enough about something. Even to using a gun? Well, the full story of that hasn't been told yet. It will be, Mr. Cartwright. Your Honor, it wasn't enough that she pulled out my fences time and time again in the face of a court order. But this time, she brought a rifle with her. She put a bullet within inches of my head. And if I hadn't been moving, I'd have been killed. Inches? It was closer than that. If I'd have wanted to hit you, I'd have hit you whether you was moving or setting. And maybe the next time I will, that, too. That will do. We have used up this day. Mrs. Wilder, I don't want to put you in jail, but I will have to unless you can promise to behave. No fighting, no firearms of any sort. I promise. Today is Friday. This hearing is adjourned until Monday morning at 10 o'clock, at which time the court will give its decision. Wrong, wasn't it? That's a bad thing to say. Well, it wasn't the best, maybe. Oh, no maybe about it. I saw the judge's face. I know what he thought. Well, you can't blame him. Nothing for it. He's got to send Amy Wilder to the loony bin. <laughs> oh, don't fret, my dear. You tried to help. Come on, Amy. We'll take you home. No, I, I'd rather you didn't. I can find my way. I've been doing it for years. Say you can do me one favor, though. Take Margaret home with you. Let her see how, how pretty the Ponderosa is. I'd be happy to. You won't be lonely, Amy. Never was. Sai will be with me and all my friends.
<laughs> no, now this is for Harriet. You're going out in the kitchen. Here you are, Harriet. Go on, go on, out in the kitchen. for your own good, wasn't you, huh? That's what they're gonna do to me, you know. folks, they was all right, just talking loud and fast, the way people do when they don't know what they're saying, but it was all right, my dear. Judge wanted to know how come I could talk to you. Ben Cartwright spoke up for us. He told expected to see you back here this morning after yesterday's session. Mm. Did you drop in in the hope of influencing my decision? I'd like to. Well, that's honest, at least. But I know better. Of course you do. So? It's a lovely day out. Much too nice a day to be inside here reading all these musty law books. I thought you might like to go for a ride. Any special reason? Well, whenever I have a tough decision to make, I'd like to have as much information as possible. I thought maybe a ride would uh, help you out, too. But you're not trying to influence my decision. I am. But only by showing you things I think you ought to see. 
field research. Mm -hmm. I was thinking of that myself. But no speeches. If there are any questions, I'll ask them. That's just the way I'd like it, Your Honor. Is this where Roberts built all these fences? That's right. That raises a question. Why build a fence here? Now that, Your Honor, is a very good question. cage yesterday. It's addressed to me. Last will and testament. Amy? 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 <laughs> Amy? Amy, it's Ben Cartwright. Amy, I know you're in there. Amy? Amy, what's the matter? Yes, then. You're not feeling well? Feeling poorly? I've never seen you take a nap in the daytime in your life. Can if I want to. I found your will. You was meant to. Your name was on it. Amy. What's the matter? You think I, I'm too sick in the head to write one? You know better than that. I can write one if I want to. They ain't said I, I'm loony yet. Not official. I can stay here if I want to, too. I'm my own boss. Till Monday. Of course you are. Is there anything I can do for you? Yep. Get out of here and leave me alone. She's fine, but she's going to stay in bed. This is quite a will. She leaves all her property at Carson to the state of Nevada to be used for a park and game refuge, all wildlife to be protected. One half of her money to be given to Margaret Weiler, the other half to be used for winter feed, salt, bird seed, hay for animals in this area. Pretty generous. 
I suppose some people will call that pretty extravagant. I'm sure some people will. After all, it's no ordinary thing buying hay for deer. Might be described as... Strange, loony, not right in the head. Is that what you think? Just because I buy hay for deer? Well, you wouldn't call a rancher feeble in the mind, would you? Just because he, he buys winter feed for his stock or, or lays out salt or worries about how well they are, would you? Now, let me tell you, and you're going to listen to me because this is my house and you can't shut me up here. They're wild things. They're God's critters. But they're my livestock. Just as Ben's cattle is his livestock. Oh, I don't drive them to market or sell them, but they're my livestock. And I can take care of them any way I want to. And the will is legal, too. It was wrote before you decided to lock me up. I haven't decided anything yet. And another thing. They're a hull lot prettier alive than they are when they're hung up on wire or, or dying of thirst. They're just plain beautiful. And you'd know it, too, if you just opened your eyes and looked around a little. I have. Mrs. Wilder, sit down, please. Oh, well. You know, already today I've met several friendly witnesses. Mm hmm? Squirrel. Never got around to naming him, poor little fellow. You know, first he was scared, but sometimes now he, he brings his kin along with him. Mrs. Wilder, that fence. Have you found many deer hurt with that wire? Told you. Trying to get to water, wire strung up in the shadows. Deer didn't see it. Got cut up something awful. You know, Mrs. Wilder, the law is a two-edged sword. Cuts both ways. It is against the law to shoot at someone with intent to hurt or to kill. It's also against the law to provoke someone into shooting. I'm going to speak to the prosecutor. Mr. Roberts must learn not to try to use the law for his own profit. Good. Did you hear that, Si? I'm sure he did, Amy. I'm sure he did. <laughs> Amy, you haven't eaten all day. I want you to just sit here with the judge and... Have a little nice talk, and I'll uh, get some soup ready for you. Why, the very idea. This is my house, and it's my kitchen, and anybody going to do any cooking around here, it's me. No, sir. We're going we're gonna to have us some steak and, and potatoes and, and canned corn and, and green beans and, and peaches for dessert. Was he saying what I thought he was saying, Ben? Mrs. Wilder, I like it here. I hope you invite me back very often. You mean I'm going to be here? Oh, glory. Glory. outside, waiting. Margaret, supper will be ready before you walk. 
bust your face. Now get on in here and set 